trail over here. Let's do that. Let's go this way. And look at this. <laughs> the trail goes nowhere. Goes onto the grass. What the heck? All right, here we are. Gonna check out quick releases. Quick releases on the bike. So what kind of a quick release is that? That is actually a internal type quick release. It is enclosed. So what is an exposed quick release? So I just happen to have a exposed type quick release here. So the exposed cam action there. It's a lot weaker than this guy down here. This is a nice high quality Shimano Ultegra internal quick release. Bike blogger here. Bike blogger here. Topic of the day. Quick release axles. Quick release axles for your bike. So we're talking like about uh where's this guy going? He doesn't know where he's going. Where are we stopping? What what's going on? What's going on? There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Just gotta shout a little louder maybe. <laughs> Uh, quick release axles so they hold your bike wheel on your bike so that's like what the most important thing in the world right you don't want your wheel coming out from your bike frame that'd be pretty dangerous pretty dangerous haven't ever really happened to me before although there was a video a while back where my wheel did get loose while I was climbing up a hill with my single speed bike and uh, I don't, I don't really want to wait for traffic here, so we're going to go this way. See if we can get around this intersection somehow. Um, but uh, there's two types of, uh, well actually three types of axles on a bike. Uh, there's the screw or the bolt-on, which are the, uh, what are considered the, uh, uh, you know, fixed gear track bike sort of setup. Here we go. A long about way to get through this intersection. Um, and then you got the quick release, which we'll talk about today. And then there's through axle. Through axle is the newest, but not that new anymore. It's been around for multiple years now. Kind of came about with disc brake bikes or with the disc brake bike industry uh, kind of taken off. Um, the disc brake bike industry really took off maybe like five years ago or so. I had a disc brake bike with quick release axles, but um, now they uh, come with through axle, most of them do at least. When is this traffic gonna end? When is the traffic gonna end? All right, I'm gonna spin it around here. Actually, we can get up on the grass here. How about that? Doo -ba -doo -doo. Doo -ba -doo -doo. Eh, I guess we'll go through the park a little bit. I go through the park a lot, but I've been trying to avoid it because keeping my distance and I don't have a mask on, so let's go down this way. Big drop, big drop for a road bike. Okay, there we go. Um, so quick release axles. They are a clamping type of mechanism. That is, the quick release axle squeezes onto the dropouts on the bicycle frame. And that holds your wheel onto the frame. It doesn't sound very effective, does it? And in fact, it isn't very effective. Um, and I would not recommend quick release for something like a track bike or a fixed gear bike. Um, you know, those typically, you know, are bolt-on anyway, but you could do a conversion. I do a lot of single-speed conversions and use a quick release. But often, you know, that I have, you know, vertical dropouts or something, something a little safer. They got those lawyer lips on the front forks of most forks, I think, still manufactured today. So even if your quick release gets quickly released or it gets loose on you which really it shouldn't happen unless a human error except 
if you're putting a lot of stress on the system with like, you know, a single speed bicycle, you know, working a really hard gear with a lot of torque, you could cause them to release a little bit. So yeah, I would recommend no quick releases for a fixed gear bike. Um, although I think most of my viewers are not fixed gear cyclists. Um, on a road bike, quick release works perfectly fine. You just gotta know how to use it right. See, if you, if you clamp down too hard, and that's usually not the problem, but if you do clamp down too hard on the hub, you'll squeeze those bearings inside of it too much, which will cause uh, you know, wear and tear, and you screw up the hub, which isn't, is probably the most expensive, eh, probably the most expensive part of a bicycle wheel is the hub uh, with the bearings inside of it because it's kind of the core. Um, so you don't want to clamp down too hard, but again, unless you have, you know, gorilla strength, it's usually not a problem. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, now we're on the road. That's one way I gotta, gotta make a right so I can get to work here today. Um, so yeah, again, quick release is a clamping sort of system. It's not a bolt-on or anything. Now, you do screw the, uh, the quick release on m most of the way, but you don't tighten it down. It's just to kind of hold the other section of the axle in place. And those little springs, you know, they're easy to lose, but they're actually pretty dang important on a bicycle that uh, has, you know, thin dropouts, like we're talking about maybe a, a steel framed bicycle. <clears throat> the springs help center the axle in place. So it assists you with that. So the springs are pretty important. You don't want to be losing those things. I suppose you could probably, okay, that guy just decided to park there. Okay, very cool. Very cool, let's get over a little bit in case he opens his door. Okay, doke. Um, but uh, yeah, so you could probably get those springs off eBay or something if you were to lose them. I don't know if they're standard size, but uh, let's make it right here. But um, I'm gonna take the sidewalk. Shoo, so I don't have to stop. <laughs> Actually, it looks like I can go through this trail over here. Let's do that. Let's go this way. And look at this. <laughs> the trail goes nowhere. Goes onto the grass, what the heck? What's going on with that? Why are there all these, it's like a half built bicycle trail there or something. Oh my gosh. That isn't actually a... Uh-oh. There we go. I'm waiting for traffic behind me. There's a cyclist straight across the head there. I'm going to drop down. Okay, we got a green light, so we're going to go here. Shoo! Um, but what was I saying? Uh, um... Yeah, so three types, you got the, the bolt-on, the old-fashioned type uh, bolt-on, like with some internal gear hub systems. I mean, we're talking like, I guess going on a hundred years ago, the original design, which is a bolt-on or screw-on. Then you got the quick release, which is a clamp-on. And now you got the through bolt, which is another screw-on type of uh, axle system. Uh, they weigh a bit heavier, I think. Again, their main purpose, I think, let's make a right here. Their main purpose is to help center the uh, disc rotors for disc brakes or help prevent them from going off center or something, I guess. Let's go straight here, actually, see where this goes. I don't know really where I'm going. This is kind of a semi-new area of a city. All the buildings look like they have that newer architectural flair, kind of a mishmash of different designs. <laughs> Not very architecturally pleasing in my opinion, but whatever. It's what's hip right now. Um, through bolt, through, oh, did I say through axle? Is it through axle or through bolt? I think it's through axle. 
I think I'm correct in that. Let's go straight here. Let's see. What's to the right? Looks like that just goes down into a parking garage. Dang, that's pretty heavily fortified. They got like fencing all around that parking garage. Ooh, speed hump. Was that a speed hump? It didn't even feel like a speed hump. <laughs> it didn't even feel like a speed hump at all. Let's go straight. I think I just made a loop. There's actually no way out. At least not the way I went there. I'm actually circling back to the same road I was on. Oh well. That's the freeway straight ahead, uh, I-64. Alright, there's a big blind spot to my left. So you can see all these parked cars there. Okay. Let's go this way. I know I can cut through the college campus here, so let's do that. Make a right here. So I, need, I need to head south. Um, so there are three things you need to consider when you're getting a new axle. If you need to buy a new axle for some reason. That was a speed bump. Uh, diameter, length, and uh, threading. Don't quote me on this, but I think threading is pretty standardized nowadays. So you probably don't need to worry about threading so much. Um, but length and diameter are important. You get too skinny of a diameter, it's going to be loose. It can get loose. or uh, you can get your um, your wheel would be kind of maybe uh, not centered properly. Uh, too big of a diameter and you're not even going to fit it in the dropouts. And that kind of goes with length. If the length is too short, well obviously it's just not going to work. If it's too long, again, you could get loose or um, be a loose fit or um, not centered properly or just more of a hassle. So you want to get the correct length for your dropouts. Typically, the length is one 63 I think millimeters for a road bike a rear wheel um, for a, like an aluminum frame or carbon frame bicycle uh, you need to look it up just you can measure your own qu uh, quick release that'd be the easiest way to do it. it's kind of like spokes um, just you know measure the full length of the quick release uh, mechanism um, I think 168 millimeters is for steel frame bicycles uh, with uh, the steel dropouts rear wheel. For the front, I think it's 100 or 110 or something. It does depend on your hub too. So, well, your hub would also, I guess, be fit to fit your frame or your fork or whatever. So, yeah, you need to do your own measurements really. But there are some more common uh, sizes, of course, like with anything. Um, what else so there are two types of quick release axles here we go oh man there's a train straight ahead look at that look at that train there's a train straight ahead <laughs> and um i guess i'm going to have to turn around unless i want to wait for the train i don't really want to wait for the train oh my gosh this road is like the worst road in the city at least in Central Corridor. What is this? Uh, Mackland? North of Manchester Avenue. City's got to get on it. Especially since they claim this is a bicycle route. Okay, so if I make a right like that SUV up ahead, I can go against the direction of the train and then maybe at the next intersection I can cross the train track because I'm, you know, be double the speed, you know, so to speak. I get doubly past the train faster here. Although it looks like the end of the train is actually straight ahead. So, it's just about the end of the train there. Oh, I need to get over, there's a car behind me. There we go. Yeah, so doing things differently in this video. Woo, it's loud. Um, we got no rear camera, so sorry about that. I do have the, you know, the face cam, but I'm gonna tone down the use of it. I'm really going back to my roots, kind of minimalist because I was just watching some of my videos on my phone. Phone is different than desktop, but even so, it's all, I think, uh, uh, blown up relative to the size of whatever screen you're watching the video on. Let's make a left here. I need to get all the way over. Um, but uh, there's too much clutter, at least in my opinion, on the screen. So, Because I had the speed, the map, and my face. 
on the uh, screen. Okay, there's, I'm watching a silver car straight ahead. So, I'm gonna pass after the sedan up ahead, but I need to wait. Oh no, it's not a sedan, it's an SUV. There's all these little mini SUVs nowadays, it's kind of funny. All right, here we go. Uh, we cross the train tracks. Ugh. I still hear the train, I guess, rumbling on the rails there. It's the reverberations and the metal sure travel long distance. Um, okay, so we're heading south. Uh, straight ahead is I-44 freeway. We need to cross that to get to work. We already crossed another freeway, so uh, I-6, or no, we didn't, uh, I think we, no, we didn't actually cross, did we cross I-64? I don't know. The other freeway back there, I might have. But uh, this one is clearly, we're going underneath it. On our way to work today. But yeah, what I was saying, <laughs> quick releases, there's two types. There's exposed cam and uh, enclosed cam type. Uh, also known as, I think, external and internal cam type of quick release. Whew. That truck is letting out some fumes. That truck's letting out some fumes. Let's keep following a little bit longer at least. Uh, pickup truck's right ahead. You can smell his exhaust from back here. Um, not good for you, by the way, breathing in exhaust fumes. <laughs> Which is why I, I do queue up behind cars at stoplights and stuff, but uh, it's kind of one reason or one argument for not queuing up behind traffic besides being you know hidden behind cars but to actually get to the front of the queue is um because uh whew, because the um the fumes you know <laughs> so i'm not even thinking straight the fumes got into my head let's try going this way to the right it says no trucks. It doesn't say no bikes. And I think it might cut through here. Wish is Carol. So that flag straight over there. We just passed. I think that's the Missouri State flag. No, no, no. I think if that might, I think if that's. Bleh, I think that's the city of St. Louis flag. The Missouri State flag has a bear on it. Cause. I think there are bears in the state of Missouri. But then again, you know, I'm a city boy, so or, you know, suburban guy, so I uh, don't know really what all sort of large creatures are in the rural parts of Missouri. Whew. Whew. Up the hill, up the hill. Um, so yeah, internal cam or external cam, enclosed, exposed. Um, so the one type, the most common type today, that's a stop sign, isn't it? All right, most common type today is uh, exposed cam or external cam quick release. It's the cheaper to make kind. It has a separate plastic washer bit. It's wedged between the, uh, the cam mechanism and I guess your axle, or the spring, uh, I mean the dropout, the spring. Of course, plastic deforms more easily than, uh, I guess, most types of metals. And so therefore, the external type quick release is a lot weaker, a lot weaker, in terms of clamping on your bike. Now that can work fine, again, like I was saying, for vertical dropouts, you know, road bike. Um, but I wouldn't really recommend for a uh, track bike <laughs> or uh, even a single speed bike. I'm riding a single speed conversion with quick releases on the back end and the front, but especially I'm talking about uh, the back and uh, whew, up the hill. And, um, 
it's a internal cam type. Also common brand is Shimano type of quick release. They still manufacture those quick releases, but I think they're, uh, they may be on their way out. Cause I think a lot of bikes are going to disc brakes. So that brings me back to the uh, through axle type. Whew. Up the hill. Okay, so I made it through there. Let's make a right. Nobody around. So I'm way out in the road here. Um, so the exposed cam type, like I said, got the plastic washer bit. Check it out, we got cobblestone here. Let's go down the cobblestone road. <laughs> yep, the video's gonna have some vibrations. Although I must say, this road actually feels smoother than some of these other roads that aren't cobblestone, which is pretty, pretty telling. Pretty sad state of some of these roads around, these residential roads. Um, this, this cobblestone is actually not in horrible condition. It, I suppose there's different types of cobblestone too. This is a very smooth type of cobblestone from one brick to the next. Or uh, I don't know if you call them bricks, but from one stone to the next. Although where does the word cobblestone even come from? Uh, makes me think of something other than red brick. Something like maybe a brownish color. Let's just go in here just because. What is this? Apartment homes for seniors. <laughs> Where am I going? Where am I going? I'm not a senior. Senior resident parking, right? Yeah. Let's get out of here. I go back down the sidewalk here. Oh, this is just wonderful. Coming at it from an angle like this. Let's get out of here. Shoo! Okay, here we go. Brum. <laughs> I'm a fit senior citizen. On my bike, leaving my apartment complex. Senior living. Let's make a left. Let's go down this way. <laughs> that truck, that, that tree trimming truck there, he's been idling. <laughs> Probably wondering what I'm doing. Going back and forth. I don't know where I'm going. I'm trying to get to work. I'm trying to get to work. But see, we're following Bike St. Louis. We're following the route. We're doing it. We're doing it. Stop. Oh, shucks. Shucks! <laughs> the light is green up ahead. Let's try to get up there here. Woo. So I think we're gonna cross, uh, let's watch it here. Nice and easy. I have the right of way, but you never know. Okay. I think that was, I wasn't really paying attention to the street signs, just the stoplight. I think that might have been Watson, or is, maybe this is Watson. Whew. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so that guy doesn't have anything tied down in the back of his truck. <laughs> I'm going to get over to the, to the right side here. because I'm just paying attention to all that, all those benches or church pews or whatever it is he's got cut up in the back of his truck bed there. So he doesn't have anything tied down. <clears throat> Should be especially dangerous on a freeway. Or maybe he had them weighted down. I didn't really notice, but it didn't see anything like a rope or anything holding the uh, stuff in the back. Let's keep following them a little bit here. I gotta speed up a little. Um, see if stuff starts... Oh, he's making a left. I was gonna say, maybe we can see if stuff starts falling out. The back of the truck. He's taking that turn real slow though, because there's a jogger. Okay, dokie. And we're gonna keep going straight. We're on Southwest right now, heading toward uh, Columbia, I think. 
which then turns back into Southwest, which is kind of strange. I'll make a left here. I think straight ahead is, um, oh, different neighborhood. The name is escaping me. Clifton Heights, that's the name of the neighborhood. Okay, straight ahead, yeah. Clifton Heights has a nice little pond uh, in part of the neighborhood, in the fancier part of the neighborhood. Okay, Doc. Oh, no, wait, actually, that's straight ahead. Straight ahead. Oh, my nose is acting up just a little. It's a little chilly. I got fingerless gloves, as you can tell. A little cold, though. I guess we're kind of making a left. Signal to the left there. Um, shoo. Now we get to go downhill big time. Only reason we can't just keep rolling downhill is there is a stop sign straight ahead, unfortunately. And then there's another stop sign where we cross I-44 again. We're going to go underneath again and i'm trying to think why that is <laughs> we already crossed it once why do we have to cross it again uh, i think because i think because it weaves weaves around so we're gonna actually cross back under i-44 again here <sighs> uh, yeah quick releases if you got any more tips leave them in the comments section below and all the other cyclists and myself can take a look and if you have any questions we'll try to answer them and uh, does your bicycle have quick releases? I mean, I'm kind of curious, uh, especially if you bought a bike within the last uh, few years. Because I'm wondering if they even really make them with quick releases that much anymore. It's kind of like with, um, kind of like with uh, road caliper rim, I should say rim brakes on, uh, on road bikes. Because uh, those have been going. Oh, it's a big bump. I saw that. I'm trying to keep a straight line here, though, because right, there's actually nobody behind me, so I could have been in the real lane here. Because um, I know more and more are switching to that through axle type, and in my opinion, without using through axle, the the idea of it that you screw them onto the bike, I actually like that more than the clamping idea, because it just seems to be a lot more. Uh, a lot better of an idea, honestly. I think I might have been able to make a turn there, but actually, I think I can get, I think there's a, is this an alleyway? Yeah, there's an, actually an alleyway here. I'm gonna go down the alleyway. And then it's one way straight ahead. I'm gonna make, so I can make a left. And that's cool, we'll, go, we'll do that. Actually, I could have gone down the alleyway there to the left, I just passed. We'll take the road, it's all cool. Almost to work now. All right. Huh. I don't know what that thing is to the left. Oh, those are like cameras. Huh. Crime center. That's kind of weird. Maybe they got like some sort of a sting. Well, that wouldn't be a sting operation if you obviously have police cameras sitting right out front of a house, but and they have problems with crime along the street or something. Woo! All right, anyway. So, I wanna make a left. It's a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of traffic though. So we'll go straight this way. And then maybe we can do a UE. Let's see. Just passed underneath a railroad track. Actually, you know what we could do? We could just make a left and go into that uh, food market thing. Let's do that. Whee! Don't worry, there wasn't anyone behind me. <laughs> oh, look at that pothole, yikes. <laughs> that was a big pothole. Brrr. Cutting around the gas station here. You know? Big blind spot to the right. Taking it slow. Saint the Tour de France. Tour de France. We can go our own pace. I think I'm going down a one way aisle there. Oops. Sorry about that. Let's make a right and then a left. Okay. Woo! All right. Almost to work now. Thanks for coming along with me. 
on this bike ride to work today. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.